Hashimoto vs Killerware does not go how you think it goes. If you clicked on this video as a Jujutsu Kaisen fan and you thought to yourself, what the fuck? Kashima would absolutely destroy Killua without any problems. And <laughs> oh, oh, brother. Well, I got news for you. But if you clicked on this video as a Hunter Hunter fan, congratulations on the massive cock. And if you clicked on this video without subscribing, it's shame on you. You should probably subscribe because this is going to be a juicy video. No, but for real, this fight would go on to surprise a lot of people when you truly sit down and look at what both combatants bring to the table. As you probably guessed, they are both electric slash lightning style fighters on which on the surface level, would leave you to believe that the older and wiser combatant Kashimo takes this fight by a big, large, and clear margin. But you'd be wrong. First, let's establish some ground rules for this video. We'll only be using everything that we know about the two fighters rather than what we think we know. If it wasn't written in the text or in the anime, then we're not going to be counting it for this video. Because we don't want any headcanon in this video whatsoever that can potentially affect the outcome of this fight. And then secondly, I'm not going to go into no crazy theoretical power scale and bullshit because one, I'm not a scientist and two, when boxers fight, you don't power scale all their feats and strengths and weaknesses and declare a winner. No. When a fight happens, a lot comes into play. But metrics used to measure the fighters are very rarely useful. So what we're going to use here is instead a list of all the abilities and tactics and techniques that both combatants have and then pair them off against each other and find out which one would come on on top. So with that being said, let's break down the two fighters. We'll start with Kashimo Hajime, a reincarnated sorcerer who's around 400 years old who spent the majority of his years fighting peons and destroying them with seemingly no difficulty at all although kashimo is technically around 400 years of age he's not technically been alive for that long he appeared to be in the later years of his life before he was reincarnated with a binding vow that was made with another sorcerer named kenjaku meaning kashimo potentially passed away for a large amount of time and this would likely be due to an unknown illness causing kashimo to cough up a lot of blood Lord when we saw him in his later years of his life. But if I had to venture a guess, he looks around 70 to 80 years of age before reincarnating him, but that would still give him a good 70, 80 years worth of combat experience and life experience in life or death situations before reincarnating into the modern era. This new younger body that Kenjaku had prepared for him, Kashimo looks a lot younger and is brimming with energy, like literally. Kashimo's main ability is lightning slash electricity control and manipulation with Kashimo's body constantly surging with it. When he connects with his opponent, Kashimo's cursed energy trait acts as a sort of electric shock, stunning his opponent in place for Kashimo to continue to land blows on them. And here's the kicker. The more Kashimo lands these blows on you and lands hands on you, the more a positive charge is transferred into your body and also a negative charge is discharged from Kashimo, which results in lightning that rends the air and cannot miss on its target. And if you don't understand that, don't worry. I got you. Basically, if Kashimo touches you enough, he can activate a sure hit static shock that is of the mighty variety, and it's sure to remove a body part or two. And then on top of all of that, Kashimo shows quick thinking and incredibly high battle IQ, even when thrown into situations that are completely and utterly unfavorable for him. For example, he was able to turn being dropped into water, his natural weakness, into an advantageous position for him by causing electrolysis to occur within that body of water, allowing for him to cause a cloud or a plume of chlorine gas knocking out his opponents. And that is not all for Kashimo. Kashimo can throw hands like a motherfucker. And he's strong and fast to boot. We see this man, Kashimo, punching a shipping container around like it's a ping pong ball. And for those of you who don't know, the average normal sized shipping container is around 1.8 to 2.2 metric tons. This is around 2,200 kilograms or 4,850 pounds at most and that's assuming that those shipping containers that he was punching around like ping pong balls were empty and had nothing in them we also see kashimo running around the shipping yard in his fight with extreme haste like this motherfucker is kicking up a massive dust trail behind him which implies some incredible speed is being used here from kashimo however it's never stated just how fast this man is running and we don't really have a frame of reference for how fast this man is moving here but it's pretty damn fast regardless one more thing about kashimo is that he does have a case technique, which is the Jujutsu Kaisen equivalent of a Nen ability for those who don't know. However, Kashimo's technique can only be used once, and we 
no, he is saving it for Sukuna, the main bad guy in Jujutsu Kaisen, if you didn't know. So since we don't know what that is, we're excluding it from this fight. As I said, it's an unknown ability and we don't know what it does, as I stated in the rules at the beginning of the video. Now let's take a look at Kashimo's opponent, Killua Zoldic. Killua is the third child of the Zoldic family and is a professional hunter, as well as a professional assassin who's come from a long line of killers with the Zoldic family. Killua, from a young age, has been taught how to kill and hurt people, as well as blend in and become invisible with his surroundings, and all of these skills have led him on the path to where he is now. While Killua's age pales in comparison to Kashima, with Killua being just 13, do not let that fool you into thinking that Killua will be helpless in this fight. This boy has been training to one day take over the family business and he's got the skills to do it. Even though he doesn't want to take over it, he easily could. Killua is similar to Kashimo in the fact that he is an electric type fighter. Killua's torture training from an, from an early childhood allowed him to develop a high resistance to electricity and an immunity to most poison and chemicals. Due to Killua's net affinity of him being a transmuter, he's able to turn his aura into electricity. However, much like Kashimo, there are drawbacks. While Kashimo's electricity can continue as long as he has cursed energy left to use, Killua's demands that he has access to a source of electricity to be able to activate this ability. But for the sake of this fight, we'll give both Killua and Kashimo a full stack of cursed energy and aura respectively to use. We're putting these two combatants into this fight for Resh. Killua's electrical ability is called Godspeed, and it is divided into two main parts. The first being Whirlwind, allowing Killua's movements to become fully automatic. Think of this as an ultra instinct. Killua sends electricity to the muscles to cut out the time spent thinking of the action, allowing him to react instantly to any threats. The second part to Killua's Godspeed is Speed of Lightning. This application of Godspeed allows Killua to keep conscious control of his movements while boosting his running speed and jump tremendously. While using this mode, Killua can move at an estimated 149 miles per hour. However, this estimate comes from Killua running through a forest on an unfavorable terrain and these speeds may be higher but going off one of the rules that i've stated in this video we don't know so we are just going to stick to killua's speed being at 149 miles per hour maximum just like kashimo killua isn't just a static shock one trick fiend killua can throw hands due to him being an assassin killua is very well versed in many techniques used to kill people as well as being insanely strong to boot killua has been shown to push open the testing gates to get into the zoldic mountain and for those unfamiliar with the testing gates they are literally massive gates used to determine whether you're worthy or not of entering the zoldic estate and there's seven gates in total all doubling in weight the more doors you push open killer will open up three doors which are equivalent to 16 tons worth of weight he's one strong boy and he's been eating his vegetables and if all that wasn't enough killer can fall back on his assassination techniques some examples include killer was footsteps being almost inaudible, moving his body in a rhythm, allowing him to create after images to confuse the enemy or his opponents, and being able to turn his fingers into claws sharper than knives. He's no pushover when fighting people more experienced than him either, having shown to strategize effectively against opponents, many times stronger and more experienced than him, and come out on the other side safely. With all this being said, I think it's time to weigh up how this fight plays out. I'm going to be honest, for me personally, I think this fight would be incredibly close, but I think Killua's assassination experience takes this victory by a long, hard margin. Even though the fight would be close, but I'm going to let you know why and now. As a Jujutsu Kaisen fan and a Hunter Hunter fan, I had to keep myself very unbiased towards both of these characters. But from everything that we see, Killua just has more behind him than what Kashimo has to offer. If we had more information on Kashimo, putting these two electrically charged fighters might have turned out differently but i'm gonna break down why i think killua takes this fight while kashimo is an incredibly strong fighter his lightning cursed energy trait would have almost no effect on killua with killua being able to withstand 1 million volts of electricity and still retain his cognitive and movement abilities similar to how hakari fought kashimo without being affected by kashimo's cursed energy trait i feel the same thing would happen with killua and kashimo with kashimo being able to trade blows on killua and killua being able to take 
take them without being affected by Kashimo's cursed energy traits. And as for Kashimo using his lightning for a sure hit effect on Killua, I believe Killua's whirlwind would allow him to keep from being harmed by this. In this case, I believe the two would come to a stalemate. Kashimo's sure hit attack versus Killua's cannot be hit defense. Killua's whirlwind allowed him to react to something he couldn't see coming when a dart was thrown at him. This dart was supposed to instantly materialize upon impact, and Killua was able to catch the dart with ease, with it being implied that you would need light speed reflexes to catch it. In this case, I think once Kashimo uses the charge and realizes that Killua could effectively dodge them, he would instead give up and try to fight Killua in hand-to-hand -hand combat. And while Kashimo is the more physically mature of the two combatants, the more this fight went on, the more Kashimo would realize that Killua's assassination techniques are a far cry from being able to just simply throw hands and brawl. I believe Killua would simply outclass Kashimo with multiple techniques and would be able to outwit and overpower Kashimo into defeat. There's many scenarios and how this fight goes and as a fan of the series the more I look at both combatants the more I feel Kashimo would simply be outclassed the longer the battle draws on. Killua having combat and assassination experience since early childhood would allow him to answer almost everything Kashimo would be able to throw his way. Even if Kashimo got desperate and dragged Killua into water and tried to use electrolysis to create chlorine gas and knock him unconscious, this would still have no effect on Killua, with Killua having an immunity to poisons and chemicals. And that is why I believe Killua beats Kashimo. Once we see more from Kashimo, we might be able to go back and reevaluate this fight. But as it stands right now, I think Killua takes this W very, very easily. It might be a close fight, but I don't think it would be close enough for Kashimo to be able to take the W. If you've been around the live streams, then you'll have heard me say that I always thought cross universe battles were pointless because a lot of them just simply don't make sense. However, since Jujutsu Kaisen and Hunter Hunter are so similar to each other, these cross face fights are actually a lot of fun and I'm going to be definitely doing more of them. But with that being said, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe and let me know how wrong I am in the comments and how Kashimo would absolutely body kill her. Just make sure to keep it civil. Or alternatively, let me know who you want to see next next in this Hunter Hunter vs Jujutsu Kaisen cross battle series and as always catch you guys all in the next one much love big kisses peace